Hello and welcome to our materials quick start video for V-Ray for SketchUp. In this video, we'll go over using materials with V-Ray for SketchUp. Here we are in SketchUp Pro 2017 and we have the scene file materials01 start loaded, which you'll find in the downloaded assets for this tutorial link shown below. Start an interactive render to visualize the scene that we have with basic gray materials. Select the bookmark view cup view and select this region around the cup and saucer in the V-Ray frame buffer or VFB to start working materials for the cup. Open the asset editor and in the materials section click to expand the material library and scroll down to select ceramics and porcelain. You can drag parts of the material library to customize its look as I'll do here and then I'll drag the porcelain B03 material over to the material list. Select the cup geometry from the viewport and apply the new material by right clicking it in the material list and choose apply material to selection. Now drag porcelain B02 over to have a similar orange material and apply to the cup saucer and give the VFB a few seconds to resolve. Now let's work on the tables material. Draw a new region like so and go to the stone material category. Scroll up to the top and drag granite A over to the material list. Select the tabletop and apply the granite material and check out how it looks in the VFB. Of course, try out different materials to your liking. Let's try stone E and see what that looks like in the interactive render. Okay, so let's make this a glass table. Go to the glass category in the library and find the glass tempered material and apply it to that tabletop. Now if you need to take notes on this, there's a notebook right there on the table for you. Let's focus on that by defining a new render region here and selecting its geometry. Go to the paper category in the library and find the paper C04 which is a patterned paper. Apply it and the notebook looks kind of odd. The pattern on the material is pretty large. This is where the 8 centimeter applies in the name of the material. It gives us a scale. So in the texture properties in SketchUp's UI, enter 8 centimeters to match and it looks much better. Turn off region render and let the whole frame resolve. Switch back to the main view and select a region around the table and one of the chairs to work on the wood materials next. Select the base of the tabletop just under the glass as well as the table legs. Click the wood and laminate category, find the laminate D01 material and drag it to the material list. Apply this to the selected table parts and change the texture size to 120 centimeters as called out in the materials name. Now we can apply the same materials to the chairs. These are component instances, so applying the material to one of the chairs applies it to all of them, just like magic. Select one of the bolts in the chair, which again selects them all. Then change to the metal category, and in the text box here, search for aluminum and drag aluminum blurry to the material list. Apply that to one of the bolts of the chair, and it is applied to all of them. Select the fabric seat and click the fabric category to apply the material called fabric pattern D01. Its texture size should already do well, but adjust it as you like and then close component. Now select a bolt and a cross brace for the shelf and assign this aluminum material as well. Okay, let's move on to the laptop, which I'm sure is used only for work and no games. Define a region around it and use the mouse wheel to zoom into the VFB. Select the plastic category and drag plastic simple blurry black over to the list. Select the base of the laptop and assign the material. Let's do something much cooler for the top using the car paint category. Drag over car paint flakes grass green and assign that to the top of the laptop mesh. Now let's get to the wall. Define a new region like so and select the walls mesh. Go to the bricks category in the material library and try out bricks weathered E02. Set the texture size to 80 centimeters, but experiment for your own look if you'd like, or try out some different materials from the library. 
I'll settle on using Bricks Painted D02 and use that with a texture size of 80 centimeters, which is just under the recommended one meter specified in the material's name. Now, I like the material itself, but that green has got to go. So let's edit the material by expanding the parameters in the asset editor. Click the map icon for diffuse, and then click on the map icon for source a texture. This is set as a V-Ray color. So click the color swatch and in the color picker, choose a light gray, which changes the paint color of my wall. Now, if it only could be that easy painting my own house. Okay, click back in the asset editor twice to get back to the properties of the material and we can move on to the floor. Define a new render region like this. In the concrete category, drag over concrete simple C01, select the floor and apply the material. Set the texture size to 200 centimeters like the name suggests. The texture is nice, but the surface itself is a little too diffuse and could be shinier like a good polished concrete. So let's get in closer to a corner region like this. Expand the material parameters and you can see there's a map for the diffuse color. Right click on the icon lets you copy and paste textures from one parameter to another. So copy this one and then right click on the map icon for reflect color and paste as copy to use the same map as the floor's color. It's not quite strong enough in the reflection so we need to boost that map. Right click and cut the texture from the reflect parameter which removes it but places it in your clipboard. Regular click on the map icon this time and choose a color correction map to create. In its attributes, right click on the texture parameters map icon and choose paste this copy to place the floors map into this color correction for adjustment. Set the brightness to one and the contrast to three and then click back. Now this boosts the reflectivity of the concrete floor as you can see in the VFB. Try a few different areas of the image to see how the polished concrete looks and make any adjustments as you prefer before rendering the entire floor region. Now, if you're not a hipster and you're not into the industrial style, let's go into the wooden laminate category and select the flooring parquet geometric A01 material and apply it to the floor mesh. Set its tiling size to 120 centimeters for a better fit of the texture and the room takes on a nicer, warmer character to it. Now we're gonna edit the material. So select a region like this. Expand the parameters for the material. Scroll down to maps and in the bump rollout, you can see the bump multiplier. Set this to 0.2 as that looks much better on this floor. Scroll back to the top and click the plus icon here to add a new layer to the material. We'll select reflection to add a shiny lacquer coat to the floor and a new rollout appears at the top. Expand it and reduce the filter color down to a medium gray. Now, by default, the reflection layer is blended using a Fresnel map, which means that looking at the surface straight on gives you less visible reflections, while looking at the surface at an angle gives you more pronounced reflections. Okay, for the rest of the objects in the scene, let's edit the existing generic material that's already applied to those objects, the ones that we haven't changed. In the material list, select generic and set a medium gray for the diffuse color as well as for the reflect color. Set the reflection glossiness to 0.85 for a fairly glossy reflection. To optimize the material, set the max depth for reflections to two to reduce the number of ray tracing calculations on those objects. Turn off region render and take a look at your render as it resolves in the VFB. Now let's look at creating new materials. Select the lamp mesh. In the asset editor, click the new material icon and choose generic and apply it to the selected desk lamp. Switch to the lamp view and select a render region around the lamp's head. Click the diffuse color swatch and pick a dark green color like so. Now to make this a metallic paint, you're gonna need colored reflections. So drag the diffuse color swatch right down to the reflect color swatch like so, 
and make it a little bit brighter. Make the reflections more blurry by adjusting the reflection glossiness down to 0.7. Uncheck the Lock Fresnel IOR to Refraction IOR to allow you to manually set the Fresnel IOR value to 1.9 to make the reflections a bit stronger in facing angles. Click the plus icon to add a new reflection layer on top of the paint and set the filter color to a darker gray to reduce the strength of these additional reflections. Take a look at the entire lamp now that it's metallic green. Go back to the main view again and in the VFB click show corrections control and feel free to adjust the image to your taste. You can load the CC02 file from the downloaded assets to add an adjustment we've already made for this image to have a higher contrast look. Stop the interactive render and let's make a final rendering. Go to the render settings, disable interactive and progressive, set your desired image quality, I'll set mine to high, and the resolution to 1280 by 720. Then click render and see the render resolve with the color corrections already affecting the results as they're still enabled. Now, as we watch this render resolve and this video comes to an end, we've seen how to use the material library to create looks easily, as well as how to edit those materials and even create new ones from scratch. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video introducing material workflows in V-Ray for SketchUp.